The 2021 and 2022 quarterback drafts might be the worst back-to-back -back QB drafts ever. You may have seen the 6,000 tweets about how all of the QBs drafted in 2022 have been traded, released, or put in prison. And just Trevor Lawrence from 2021 remains with his team from the first round. And as the draft approaches, I wanted to dive into all these ball throwers and tap into what went wrong and how NFL teams desperately reaching for their franchise quarterback is also hurting these young players. While reaching is part of the issue, the NFL quarterback philosophy has also changed. And while that may not be great for the quarterback, it's ultimately better for the franchise, maybe. Rookie quarterbacks are incredibly valuable because of their lack of monetary compensation in comparison to quarterbacks who get franchise deals. Every team does want to find the next CJ Stroud, but also they just want someone good enough on a rookie deal, allowing them to spend money on all other parts of the roster to try and win that way. Russell Wilson was really the guy who convinced NFL GMs that winning with a good but flawed quarterback on a rookie deal was a legit option. Since the 2013 season, only Patrick Mahomes has won a Super Bowl on a rookie deal, which makes me believe this this approach is also incredibly flawed. Although we've seen guys like Brock Purdy and Joe Burrow get to the Super Bowl. It's not as flawed though as executing a massive trade for a veteran quarterback that doesn't work out. Just look at the difference in perception right now that exists for the Bears and the Broncos heading into this draft. Chicago is in the perfect position to reset the franchise despite moving on from Justin Fields. The Broncos, who could have had Fields, are now having to blow it all up and are praying the best quarterback is QB number five at the end of April. It all starts though in 2021, the first overall pick, and actually with the last overall pick in 2022. Out of everyone drafted in 21 and 22, only two quarterbacks projected to start in week one of the 2024 season are Trevor Lawrence and Brock Purdy. Lawrence survived a year under Urban Meyer, which is like surviving a Russian winter with only a jock strap. I like it. I'm kind of messed up. T-Law won a playoff game in year two, erasing a 27 point deficit with new head coach Dougie Peterson. As for Purdy, he's won four playoff games in two years and came within an overtime period of a Super Bowl ring. Unfortunately, those weren't the only QBs selected. We have Zach Wilson, Trey Lance, Justin Fields, Mac Jones, Kyle Trask, Kellen Mond, Davis Mills, Ian Book, Sam Ellinger, all going in 2021. Yeah, come on, keep coming. Now we're not gonna talk about a bunch of those guys because they're mid and late round picks, but the top half of that draft, those are all the guys taken after Trevor Lawrence. Like I said, none of those guys are expected to start week one of next season. Although I certainly wouldn't rule out Justin Fields surprising everyone in Pittsburgh. The only man he needs to surprise uh, is Arthur Smith. Now two of those guys, Kellen Mond and Ian Book, aren't even on a roster and haven't thrown a pass since their rookie seasons. Book got one start on Monday Night Football back in 2021 and it was enough to convince Sean Payton to briefly retire. That's how bad it was. But I think the most egregious pick of that draft class was indeed Trey Lance, who's currently a backup's backup in Dallas as a cowboy. Knowing this was Jerry Jones' draft evaluation of Trey Lance, seeing him land in Dallas is no surprise. Now Lance only had one year of starts under his belt at North Dakota State in 2019 and was robbed of a junior season due to COVID. But that didn't discourage the 49ers from trading up from 12th overall to third overall to take a guy they knew was a project a guy they knew very little about. I don't think the problem was the aggressive nature of the trade, it was the timing. Despite going through a disappointing season in 2020 after reaching the Super Bowl a year before, the 49ers were still very much in the middle of a championship window and were working with a win now roster. And if you believe you have a win now roster, you're gonna do some crazy things. See the Broncos. And don't forget we just launched tea over at benchwarmerbrew.com. It's my wife, Jess's tea, and it's delicious. And I'm not just saying that because she has threatened to frame me. Also, they're selling really fast, so go get them before they're gone. Jimmy Garoppolo was the incumbent QB, and they thought that if they upgraded that position, they would be set. The guy who was drafted 12th overall, of course, was two-time All-Pro Micah Parsons. 
Imagine him with Nick Bosa and Fred Warner and Brock Purdy leading the team now. So why did they take a 20-year-old project QB with only 318 passes thrown in Division I college football? I know Carson Wentz hit the ground running coming out of the same school uh, half a decade earlier, but he had a lot more experience to draw from and evaluate when he joined the Eagles back in 2016. It's easy to see why a team would pick Lance. He was excellent in 2019, combining for 42 touchdowns and zero interceptions, leading the Bison to a 16-0 record, but the 49ers were a team that was ready to strike while the iron was hot. Now, despite mortgaging their future with the Dolphins, it really didn't end up hurting them, which is crazy. Although it's obvious they would have been better served not giving up three first round picks plus a 2022 third rounder to get a guy who started just four games for the 49ers. It was also really nice of the Niners to build the Miami Dolphins roster via that trade. So one of their own coaches, Mike McDaniel, could have success when he left the team. Very nice. There was also speculation that Kyle Shanahan preferred uh, Mac Jones and that he had to be convinced into drafting Trey Lance. Now, Justin Fields went off the board at pick 11 and Mac Jones became a Patriot four picks later. It's fair to say that both of those guys walked into less than ideal circumstances. And while Fields slowly improved in Chicago, Jones fell flat after his rookie season that included a trip to the playoffs. After being benched what felt like 50 plus times for Bailey Azapi, who was drafted in the fourth round in 2022, Jones is back in his hometown backing up Trevor Lawrence with the Yegiwars. Now I hope you understand how crazy that is. It would be like Jim Kelly backing up John Elway from the 1983 draft, or Drew Locke backing up Dan Jones. Oh, wait. Never mind. McCorkle Jones not succeeding as the fifth quarterback taken in 2021 isn't that crazy. Hell, Belichick couldn't even keep his job in the not for long league, okay? But he lost his job because the Patriots were so bad that they're now in a spot to easily replace him at pick three. Mac Jones' touchdown percentage declined every season, so his play, of course, didn't help him. And what we really don't know is if that's Mac Jones or if it's a lack of weapons and coordinator changes that he was dealt in New England that stymied him. In fact, if you wanna talk about the worst thing for a young quarterback's development, it's coaching changes either head coach or offensive coordinator. Every single quarterback taken in the first round in 2021 dealt with that, except for Trey Lance. It's a great recipe for stunting development. Now for Justin Fields, uh, the best and worst thing that ever happened to him was the Bears trading out of the first overall pick back in 2023. The swap with the Panthers netted them a number one receiver in DJ Moore. But the Panthers were so abysmal last year that the Bears found themselves in prime position to presumably take Caleb Williams first overall. Fields was expendable. His value was only a sixth round pick. And now he's breathing down Russell Wilson's neck in Pittsburgh. He probably has to crouch a little bit to do that, <laughs> but breathing on his neck, he is. The only quarterback taken in round two was Kyle Trask, and despite getting the chance to win the starting job in 20-23, he still only attempted 10 passes for the Buccaneers, so I think that tells you all you need to know. His lack of production saved Baker Mayfield from becoming a backup for the rest of his career. Now, the 2021 quarterback draft being such a crapshoot has a lot to do with the fact that it was the year 2021. The chaos of the year prior prevented Trey Lance from getting another season under his belt. And even if NIL money was legal then, ain't nobody paying quarterbacks in Dakota, so I bet he goes to the draft anyway. Okay, are you sure? Lance's situation was different than what we saw from the second overall pick, Zach Wilson, even though both benefited from limited sample sizes. Heading into 2020, Zach Wilson was not on the NFL's radar as a first round pick. He had potential, but in 2019 at BYU, he had thrown just 11 touchdowns to nine interceptions. BYU was dead set on playing football in 2020, but a lot of their opponents weren't. They were originally slated to play teams like Michigan State, Minnesota, Utah, Arizona State, Stanford, and Missouri. Those games were canceled and the Cougars ended up facing teams like Navy, Troy, Texas State, Western Kentucky, North 
Alabama, and Louisiana Tech. Not quite as formidable as a schedule, and as a result, BYU had 10 games where they scored over 40 points, and Zach Wilson got to pad his stats against lesser opponents, throwing 33 touchdowns and just three picks during the COVID year. He got to play an entire season on easy. I'm not saying that should have been a red flag for Wilson, but his numbers were inflated, and he wasn't the same quarterback before or after he got to beat up on lesser talent. One of the top things a good NFL draft scout will decipher is how prospects play against equal or superior opponents. I'm not sure the Jets have any of those scouts. Scouts should have considered that more heavily, but they were sucked in by a lot of cool throws, including the infamous crossbody throw at BYU's Pro Day. And sure enough, the Jets pulled the trigger on him second overall, which is exactly what they did to his career. Shot him in that pretty little blonde young fuckboy face. So maybe it's not all that surprising that Wilson has two more career interceptions than touchdowns and is currently stuck in roster limbo. Uh, he could be had right now for a seventh round pick and teams don't want to pay him $5 million at the moment, so they're not even going to give up that. If you want to know how bad I have it, Zach Wilson is undefeated against my Broncos in two games. We're the only team that can't fucking beat him. The 2021 quarterback class might feel a little less busty if Trevor Lawrence built or builds upon his 2022 season. He didn't do that in 2023, and he had more talent to work with. Considering Urban Meyer really was even worse than we thought, T-Law gets my benefit of the doubt and deserves another year before we really judge him. And really, you want three to four full years to judge any of these quarterbacks. They used to be given more time to develop, but that patience is gone. Lawrence's glaring weakness, though, is fumbling the rock. 24 fumbles over the last two seasons, only trailing, ah, uh, shit, Justin Fields. But let's move on to 2022. After five quarterbacks went off the board in the first uh, 15 picks in 2021, we didn't see a quarterback get his name called until pick 20. The next year when the Steelers took local product Kenny Pickett. And while the names in the 2022 draft produced aren't as big as 2021, the results have been similar. But that was expected. The difference being teams are okay with the quarterbacks not working out because they drafted them in more appropriate spots to correlate to their talent and developmental stages as QBs. If we see five quarterbacks taken in the first round here in April of 2024, I'm scared I'll be making this same video in two years. When CBS Sports released a mock draft on September 13th, 2021, they had four quarterbacks going in the top 11 picks. Nevada's Carson Strong was projected first overall, Spencer Rattler at six, Sam Howell nine, and Matt Corral at 11 making that officially the worst mock draft in the history of mock drafts and the fact that Joe Biden hasn't stepped in and shut down CBS Sports entirely is the number one reason I'm voting for Aaron Rodgers in the next election. Carson Strong went on to have an excellent season in 2021, winning Mountain West Player of the Year, but concerns about the status of his knee caused him to go undrafted, and he's since medically retired from football. So the projected first overall pick never took a regular season snap in the NFL. And that way, I'm a lot like Carson Strong. Seeing Spencer Rattler at sixth is obviously pretty funny, knowing he would go on to play three full college seasons after that mock draft came out. Now that's not the author's fault. Uh, no one could have predicted the arc of Rattler's career, but we'll see him as a day two or day three pick in this upcoming 2024 draft. Sam Howell did go off the board in 2022, but not until the fifth round to Washington, where he won five of 18 starts with the Commanders over two seasons and was sacked 65 times in 2023 before being traded to the Seattle Seahawks this offseason. And he's almost certainly the second best quarterback taken in 2022. 
Matt Corral is a wild and strange case. The Panthers took him with the 94th overall pick and he never recorded an NFL stat. Corral suffered a Liz Frank injury in 2022, the preseason, ending his rookie year before it started. Then Carolina waived him a day after he made the 53-man roster in 2023. He was eventually claimed by the Patriots, then placed on the exempt list after mysteriously leaving the team without notice and failing to report for two consecutive days before being essentially cut in September. Now he's on the Birmingham Stallions roster in the United Football League, and I don't even believe he's starting there. The first three QBs selected in 2022 weren't projected first round picks in that preseason mock draft. We had the aforementioned Kenneth Pickett becoming the only passer off the board in the first two rounds. Then Desmond Ritter and Malik Willis were the next two at picks 74 and 86 respectively. Ritter ascended as a prospect when he led a non-Power 5 school in Cincinnati on an undefeated run into the first round of the college football playoff, but failed to take advantage of his opportunities in Atlanta and was traded to the Cardinals this offseason to make room for Big Kirko Cousins. Sometimes we talk about elite wide receiver talent carrying college football quarterbacks, helping them get drafted. But Sauce Gardner might be so good as a corner that he's the first corner who helped his quarterback get drafted because his defense was so good. That's what Sauce as a Cincinnati Bearcat might have done for Desmond Ritter. Now Ritter threw just two touchdowns in 2022 in limited action with the Atlanta Falcons, but was perfect in 2023 with 12 touchdowns and 12 picks perfect balance. The irony, of course, is that Justin Fields, if he gets a shot, will need Ritter's NFL head coach and play caller Arthur Smith to save his career. Arthur Smith may not be perfect, but Ritter's biggest crime was not getting more done with an insane amount of talent on his offense. Malik Willis emerged from complete obscurity, a backup for two years at Auburn, before winning 17 of his 23 starts at Liberty. Willis was mocked as high as second overall in the lead up to the 2022 draft, and that wasn't before the season. It was after. So why did he slide to the Titans 84 picks down? Well, Ian Rappaport reported that everybody loves the talent, but the offense he plays in is so simple. Their questions, how quickly could he get acclimated to the NFL? Could it take one year? Could it take two years? That certainly has led to some of the hesitancy with him not getting selected. It turns out the naysayers were likely correct. Willis is still with the Titans as of this video, but in three starts and 66 passing attempts, he's never thrown a touchdown. And we should never judge a young quarterback on a very, very limited sample size, but the word raw probably isn't enough to describe where Willis appears to be in his quarterback development. Tennessee signaled they had essentially given up hope that he would become their future starter when they selected Will Levis after Willis's rookie season. Two quarterbacks from the 2021 draft have started playoff games. And surprisingly enough, two quarterbacks from 2022 have started playoff games as well. The last two QBs taken in that draft, Skylar Thompson and Brock Purdy. Holy shit, we forgot about Skylar Thompson. Thompson getting a start in the wildcard round for the Dolphins who built their roster with that Trey Lance trade with the 49ers against the Bills is certainly a fluke, but it happened. It's a fact that will be lost to time, save for the occasional trivia question. Purdy might have been Mr. Irrelevant, but a fluke he is not. Purdy has started six playoff games, won four of them, and you can't even credit him for one of the losses because he tore his elbow up in the first quarter. He gave his team a lead in overtime of the Super Bowl. He also made Trey Lance entirely expendable after Garoppolo and Lance's injuries in 2022 forced him into the starting role, a spot he's never relinquished. Am I smart enough to know why the last pick of the draft was also the best quarterback in the draft? Not really, and neither are you. All you can really surmise is that he was the perfect fit for Kyle Shanahan's offense. He processes the field better than anyone thought he did in college, and he's got intangibles that were obscured by run-of-the-mill measurables. And while the first quarterback taken in 2022 is now on his second team, Mr. Irrelevant is an NFC champion, and he's likely to be the only quarterback in that draft to get a second contract from the team that drafted him. 
I like the Brock Purdy comparison to Kenny Pickett as well because they both went to good teams. One has thrived and the other did not. Go figure, it all illustrates the fact that NFL teams and NFL scouts, in spite of all the tireless work they do, trying to reduce the draft to a science and not a crapshoot, still don't have it figured out. And they likely never will. What we do know is when a team needs a quarterback, they get desperate, they get scared, and they do wild shit in the draft. And the reality is, more teams will be wrong then right. Thanks for watching, that's good sports. Please subscribe here on YouTube. Uh, if you don't subscribe, <laughs> YouTube said they're gonna start coming after us creators like old bookies did to guys with gambling debts. You know what I'm saying? Please, come on, subscribe.